Central C and uh, Central C. Okay, l- uh, listen, yeah, I need to stop talking like that because fam, I sound annoying, fam. You get me? It's your boy Loma, you know what I'm saying? Loma and Graham, Loma and Tuck, Loma's back with a reaction, 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 reaction. You get me? Guys, the untold story of Central C, you feel know what I'm saying? Guys, Central C yeah, is literally, arguably, the biggest rapper to come out the UK, bro. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear you OGs complaining, fam. No offense to my older brother, yeah, but my older brother, he's 10 years older than me. And fam, this guy, yeah, we have some debates about UK rap and he always brings up, yeah, like rappers that were popping in like 2009. Like he always brings up like Stormzy and Skepta and that, like, bro, let it go, bro. Let it go. We have a new kid in town, you get me? We have a new kid in town. This is our Stormzy. This is our Chip Diddy Chip. This is our Skepta, you feel what I'm saying? This is the new generation. Now, I'm not saying Central C is as talented as them, man. But give him his flowers, man. Give this guy his flowers. My man's got like 30 million monthly listeners or some bullshit like that. Like, he's crazy, man. And guys, I know it's not all about numbers, but the streams don't lie. Let's be real. The streams don't lie, man. Guys, the untold story of Central C, man. Guys, hope you enjoyed, hope you enjoyed this reaction. I need I need to start the reaction yeah because I've been waffling I've been waffling yeah that's what I've been doing I've been waffling. <laughs> we all know you've been running around these past couple of months singing. How can I be homophobic? What did he do? There? We all know you've been running around these past couple of months singing. How can I be homophobic? My bitch is gay. And hey, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I'm no better. C is one of the biggest artists coming up from the United Kingdom and making waves in the international waters. But before we got to know his views on the LGBTQ community, like homophobia, I think it's so weird. Or him taking the matters into his own hands. And <laughs> Oi, that is the words of somebody who don't care about homophobia. Listen, LGBTQ community, <laughs> like homophobia, I think it's so weird. Or you know that one time, like you know. <laughs> Oh, you know when you get put on the spot to answer a question and you don't want to get cancelled, fam? This is how you answer it. But before we got to know his views on the LGBTQ community... Like, homophobia, I think it's so weird. ...or him <laughs> taking the matters into his own hands and helping his girlfriend to come out as homosexual... My bitch is gay. Central C, like all of us, had to start somewhere. C was born on June 4th, 1998, to an Irish mother and Guyanese father. He grew up in Shepherd's Bush, London. Believe it or not, Central C is not his government name. His birth name is Oakley Neal H.T. Caesar Soon. Growing up, his father would play hip-hop, reggae, and dancehall music around him. According to C, he kept to himself in school, but would occasionally misbehave and lose his temper. He went to the same school as another big UK rapper. If you're from the UK, yeah, we all know a guy that looks like this, like it looks like Central C. You know what I'm trying to say? This is what I'm saying, like, yo, ah, oh, this world that we live in is so crazy. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, guys, there is literally a kid right now, yeah, that is plotting to be the next Drake, and he's going to achieve that. You know what I'm trying to say? And everyone right now is literally doubting at him, like, doubting him. And looking at him like he's nothing. You know what I'm trying to say? There's a kid right now that's planning to be the next Kai Senat. I mean, you're looking at one. You're looking at a kid that wants to be the next biggest thing. You know what I'm trying to say? And it's like, yo, me saying that, I know there's going to be people at home that are going to look at me like I'm a maniac. You know what I'm trying to say? Just for even thinking and saying those things. That's why you can't really throw your ideas and your, your goals to small-minded people. Because it's like, yo, look at this guy. If you would have told this kid, yo... In a few years' time, give it five years, you are going to be the biggest artist to come out of the UK. People are going to be debating, saying that you're the biggest in the... To, people, are going to, people, go, people are going to be debating, saying that you're the biggest rapper to come out of UK history. If you would have told this geezer that five years ago, yeah, I don't know what he was like. I don't know if he was like a motivational guy, yeah. But the people around him probably would have laughed at him still. Raggo, what? Are you, are you, are you mad? What? You think he's going to be bigger than Stormzy? What, you think he's going to be bigger than Chip Diddy Chip? Bro, people would say things like that. I'm telling you, it's a weird world we live in, man. And now everyone's giving him his flowers. It's a weird world we live in. I just want to say something, yeah. If you are chasing a goal, yeah, don't fling it out to small-minded people. Just keep it to yourself and chase that shit, man. Because honestly, and don't dream small. Do not dream small, man. Because honestly, yeah, this... I genuinely feel like, yeah, this world is limitless. Anything you want to achieve, you can achieve it if you've got the, if you've got the visualization and you know exactly where you want to go with it, man. Car. Nobody would have looked at this kid, yeah, and thought he would be in the position that he's in today. That's all I'm saying, man. I don't want to waffle. Let's keep watching.
but would occasionally misbehave and lose his temper. He went to the same school as another big UK rapper, Digga D, who was a couple of school years higher. Before finding success in music industry, C worked at a shoe shop, but after just a couple of weeks, he left the job after figuring out his wage. Caesar Sue began recording music at the age of 14. I think that's where a lot of people are mistaken to think that he's just an artist who just started rapping. I've even heard rumors about people calling him an industry plan. C has been making music for almost 10 years before he got his first hit. In 2015, Central C appeared on the 8 on Nothing remix, alongside Jay Huss and more. This remix is really important because this is where he adopted his rap name, Central C, and was starting to get into the industry. He released his Street Heat Freestyle in February of the same year. On August 2016, he released his single Pull Up, Pull up and in 2017, C released his first project, the EP17. These few releases helped C begin his career, but at that point he was just another UK artist who brought nothing new to the table. If you would go back and listen to his older music, he sounded nothing like he sounds today. Pull up, skirt, would you drive for me? Tell me now, would you die for me? But that's a part of the journey. Up to this point, C would use a husky, wavy sound with a lot of. Why would Litsy just added like a beat at that P fam? Like he sounds today. Pull up, skirt, would you drive for me? Tell me now, would you die for me? It's such a 2016 tune though. Like I know I would have been bumping this if I found out about this tune fam. But that's a part of the journey. Up to this point, C would use a husky, wavy sound with a lot of autotune, much like other UK artists. He figured that he needed to separate from the crowd. It took him some time to find the sound, but once he found it, it was only up from there. It was around this time where Central C started to get into the trap wave. He released Next Up, Back to Back, Transition in October of 2019. These singles showed that he put aside old singing technique and fully dived into the trap sound. As a cherry on top, he also released a freestyle on Instagram, which gained a lot of traction, showing that his new sound is what the people want. Sleeping, but it's about time when you all awaken. Seems like they want everybody segregated. He was keeping it busy from 2015 to 2020. After five years of releasing music, he started to gain some buzz around his name, but it was nothing compared to what was coming for him. A SARS-like virus which has infected hundreds in China has now reached the United States. In 2020, coronavirus struck the world. All of us went to lockdown, we ate a bunch of junk food, gained a lot of weight, and started using the devil's app, TikTok. For Central C, this was a blessing in disguise. In the beginning of 2020, C got his hands on his first drill beat. According to him, Day in the Life was his first drill. Yeah, man, uh, um, coronavirus was like, um, it was a weird year still. For a lot of people, it was like the worst year ever. But for a lot of people, it was like the start of something new. So coronavirus was actually the first year where like, I pretty much started to get a little bit of traction, bro. I'll be so honest. Like, coronavirus was a, was a big year for me. I ain't gonna lie, man. That's really where, like, the little man stuff started, man. Because I was doing it here and there before corona. But corona is where I started really nailing down on it. Really started going in with it. Like, I, ugh, bro, it was mad. Long story short, yeah, it was a mad year for man, still. I can't lie, still. <laughs> kinda, I kind of have a chip on my shoulder about that year, though. Kind of do, fam. Because it was such a good year. I just think, yo... God willing, I can top that year, man, because that was such a big year for me. Beginning of 2020, C got his hands on his first drill beat. According to him, Day in the Life was his first drill song. After recording it, he knew that the song was special, but it was so much different from his other music that he didn't even have anything to follow that up with. In No Jumper interview, he mentioned that after making the song, he had a lot of confidence that he can make more songs like that. Kinda, but like when I made that song Day in the Life, that was like my first like time jump jumping on a drill beat, yeah, if you want to call it that. That was like the first time I jumped on that to be when i dropped that song even i didn't have nothing to follow it up with i didn't know what i was doing i had a good feeling about the song and i knew i could make more songs like it i know mm. i can make I know, I know i can jump on any kind of beat really on june 14 2020 the world got to listen his breakthrough single day in the life Turn off the auto -tune. Let's hear you really rap. <laughs> Couple months in, Central C was everywhere. The song was a huge hit and it went viral on TikTok. C with this one hit managed to become one of the biggest rappers that blew up during the coronavirus. It's interesting to think that before pandemic, he didn't even have a proper interview or ever met his new and bigger portion of his fans. He also got co-signs from artists like Big Sean and Drake. Drake! And all of it was just the beginning. After success of Day in the Life, he released a few singles like Molly, Commitment Issues, Pinging, and Loaded, which eventually overtook Day in the life and is now his biggest song to date. These releases only show that C had fully solidified his sound. As we all know, these are also some of his most famous songs. They also got pretty popular on TikTok and even got a couple of, I would say, insane videos. If I can't afford that bag that you want, then I will lick that for you. Oh, stop it. I don't know what's going on here. Can I just clear up here? When I say I'll lick that for you, I mean I'll hit that lick for you. I don't know what you look for I was saying, but you got it misconstrued.
All of them are straight hits, but I want to specifically mention Ping it. During the chorus, he says, Take that risk and go independent, I just turned down six figures. It's different. I think this is an important detail to mention. Yeah, man, Central C did that a lot, a lot in his older, um... He, he did that a lot in his older songs, you know. I don't know if you remember the song Molly. Molly's from Central C. He says something like, Man said 21 with a mil. I need the same deal as H's. Now look at him, fam. Like, my man's like, respectfully, no no, no hate to H, but respectfully. Central C is clear of H, respectfully. A man is saying, Man said 21 with a mil. I need the same deal as H's. Now he's getting like, now he's at like the best deal that any UK rapper's ever got. I'm not glazing in it. I'm just showing my flowers, man. I really do like... I don't know, man. It's like, yo, I, I don't I don't feel like I've got anything to show for it. But, like, I do relate with him, I feel like. You know what I'm trying to say? And I haven't got this success to show for it onto, onto why I feel like I relate with this geezer, in it. I just feel like, yeah. You know when you see someone successful and they speak about it and how and their journey to the top, and you just think, yo, I relate with this guy so much. And it just makes you think, like, yo, I can do this. You know what I'm trying to say? And it just reassures you as well that this game is not luck. You know what you're just saying? Like, this game ain't look, man. I feel like people that are not going to make it in life just want to hear those things. They want to hear that it's look. I don't feel like to make it where you want to be is all a look thing. I generally feel like, yeah, hard work beats look, fam. Now, look is obviously a real thing, but I feel like hard work will beat that look. You know what you're trying to say? I don't know, man. I, I generally believe that, man. I generally believe that, man. I feel like if you believe, if you dream big and you work hard towards your dream, it's like, yo, it's about time it's going to work out. It's about time, fam. I don't believe in luck. And if luck is real, if luck is real, then the harder you work, the luckier you will get. That's my opinion, innit? That's just literally my opinion. The harder you work, the luckier you will get. It's going go independent. I just turned down six figures. It's different. I think this is an important detail to mention that Central C, to this day, is still an independent artist who only has... Not anymore. Not anymore. Is this video quite old? Yeah, seven months old. Not anymore. He, he he just signed the biggest deal, I think, or something like that. One of the biggest deals in like UK rap history. The distribution deal. It's honestly so nice to see another great artist who is making waves and is publicly speaking about being fully independent and rebelling against record labels. Also, I want to mention that he's one of those artists who has an insane work ethic. He keeps dropping music, making music videos pretty much non-stop without taking any long breaks. After a couple of hit singles, C started to work towards releasing a mixtape. One of many things C is really good at is marketing. His 2021 Wild West mixtape had a really impressive marketing strategy. You see, when you're a musician, you have to have your own signature. One thing that will help people instantly think of you. For example, Michael Jackson had his glove. OG Simpson is also famous for his glove, but for a completely different reason. Elvis Presley, Freddie Mercury had flashy, untraditional, eye-poking costumes. And well, Central C just went for an orange color. And when I'm saying he went for it, I mean it. It was everywhere. Music videos, cars, jackets, shoes, walls, everything had some sort of orange. He even himself mentioned a couple of times about him painting his city orange. Already then, the hype was huge, but he managed to up it even more. He linked up with Trapstar. Trapstar is one of most respected UK streetwear brands. They did a collab together on his album by releasing merch. This is where his genius comes into play. Even if people don't listen to C, they will still buy the merch because it's from one of the biggest, most respected brands. They might resell the stuff or they genuinely like the brand, but C made sure that with every unit of clothing sold, they would get a physical copy of the album as well as a download code, which would count as two units sold towards the UK album charts. A lot of artists do these types of bundles and it's not something new in the music industry. A perfect example would be Travis Scott with his album Astroworld. Whole nigga of the week of course is Travis Scott. But what we not gonna do is have this auto tool man coming up here selling fucking sweaters and telling y'all he sold half a million fucking albums cause he didn't. But for an up and coming guy who has a good amount of hype to link up with well established streetwear brand and do a collab together is pure genius. Wild West eventually charted the number 2 on the UK album charts. This was an insane achievement for him and his team. Again I just want to remind you that this was all done independently. The next day was a success. Central C won JRM rated a Award for Breakthrough Artist of the Year and Male Artist of the Year. Also won a Best Newcomer at the Mobile Awards. And the winner is... Is this when he came down to the thing in like a coat? Uh, you know, I'm not really a newcomer though. Following his success, he didn't stop there and started to work towards his new mixtape. This time, he changed the color. From orange 
Yellow. Once again, we saw yellow everywhere. Even his video lyrics were yellow. He released another single, Obsessed With You, which is also a huge hit from his catalog. The day I'm recording this video, it's his third most popular song on Spotify. He followed up with Retail Therapy, Cold Shoulder, and Khabib before dropping his mixtape on the 25th of February, 2022. The mixtape was another huge success. 15 songs, no features, apart from one song with his brother and a track called Eurovision, which concept I find really unique and interesting. On the song, he has rappers from different European countries Smart. rapping in their native language. Smart. It's really refreshing to see somebody from Europe embracing where they come from. The mixtape charted at number one on the UK album charts. He didn't take any break after reaching number one and went straight back into the booth. After previewing on social media and concerts. Oh, cool, listen though, this ain't a song any of you lot are familiar with. This was in Birmingham, I was there. This is an unreleased. Hitman in a top chassis, I'm a top plus, even a stick is gay. Let's be honest, yeah. Though to be so honest, I'm not even gonna hit it, sit here in the front and act like, oh, I, I knew this was gonna be a banger. I'll be real, yeah. When man heard this tune in wireless, I turned around to my bridge and I laughed at him. I said, what the fuck is this shit? I'll be so honest. Right around to him and say, what is this shit that he's playing right now? I'll be so real. But this is go this goes back to what I've been saying this whole video. Don't throw your ideas out there to everyone. Car blood. He knew what he was doing with that tune. He knew that tune, yeah, was gonna be a banger. Furthermore, yeah. He knew sneak peek in that tune. Bro, you think he's just sneak peeked that tune at wireless just for free, for no reason? He knew that was marketing. You know what I'm trying to say? He knew that it would go viral. He knew the lyrics were mash. Bro, he knew the lyrics were controversial, fam. So he promoted it at wireless to get people talking a bit. And honestly, the day after he performed at wireless, the day after I seen it everywhere, all, all over my Instagram, all over my TikTok. I seen everyone talking about it. Bear in mind, the song ain't even dropped yet. You know what I'm trying to say? And a week after that, I think he made a TikTok about it. And then, boom, the song's gone viral before it's even went out. You know what I'm trying to say, fam? So, listen, don't don't be throwing your ideas out there. Because I bet you a lot of people are saying and thinking the same thing. Like, yo, don't release that tune, fam. Because I was thinking to you, blood. I was sitting there thinking, yo, this guy's a better not release this tune, you know. And now, look, fam, <laughs> Doja pretty much made him clear in America. So, yeah, man, hey. Legend, man. Can't lie. <laughs> I'm glazing the life out of this geezer, fam, but I don't care, fam. On July 21st, 2020, he released his new, soon to be the biggest song ever, Doja. It was released alongside a music video which was directed by the one and only Cole Bennett. It became his highest charting song of his career and debuted at number 2 on the UK singles chart. It also reached at number 13 on the US bubbling under Hot 100 chart. This perfect combination between catchy song and Cole Bennett's amazing skill to make a music video outstanding gave a big push to see his music becoming more and more popular in the United States. Everybody is talking about it. I don't know if you noticed, but again, we can see a lot of one specific color in the single color and music video. I think this is the way he's going to promote his albums for a while. We had Orange with Wild West, Yellow with 23, and now his new project is probably going to be soaked in blue. The rest is history. There is yet no release date for his new album or mixtape, but I'm sure that with all of this hype, that he can not only create around himself, but actually maintain it. His next project is going to be massive. His story only proves us once again that with hard work and determination, you can achieve everything. Don't give up on your dreams because you never know what can happen. Hey, you know, I respect him and his story is honestly. His story is honestly like motivational and I feel that like anyone who's chasing a dream out there to be, not even just the artist man, anyone who's chasing a dream that seems a bit like unrealistic or far-fetched or delusional, just know yeah that delusion, that delusion that you have, that delusional confidence that you have yeah, if you genuinely believe that you can do it man just keep chasing it man honestly like deep as kids, as kids we genuinely believed it could be anything and I feel like when we joined school and you know, like I feel like when we joined school, yeah, I feel like the school system stripped that those dreams out of you, and then you almost forget how to dream a bit. You forget how to dream big. That's generally how I feel, bro. That's generally how I feel. You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, though, people, I don't want to waffle too much on it. Just if if you're chasing a dream, yeah, look at this video as motivation. Generally, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, his story is just sick, man. I remember one time I was on his Instagram story, and um, he must have posted certain like, he must have posted like a clip of him in like 2018. Um, at, at wireless but he's in the crowd and he's watching D Block Europe perform and he's like yo like years ago today I was watching D Block Europe perform now I've got a song with him you know what I'm trying to say and I think the song that he's got with D Block Europe is D Block Europe's biggest song you know what I'm trying to say so hey listen yeah 
Hey, listen, any, anything that sounds far-fetched to you, yeah, if, if you actually believe in it, keep chasing it, people. But I don't want to waffle too much, people. If, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, uh, follow the Twitch, man. And yeah, man, people, daily uploads. Peace!